what's up everybody rob marzullo here ram studio comics welcome back so today's video is in response to uh, a request for how to draw aliens so i'm going to go ahead and do this in manga studio and show you how i'd go about doing that so like i've probably mentioned in tons of my other videos um that a lot of times when doing aliens you try to pull from different animals is always a good idea uh, and try to kind of combine animals it's also the the same thing that's real popular like with you know dragons or, or just really any type of fantasy based creature um, I think all the things that generally are either the scariest or the most well-defined or cool to look at have some kind of basis in reality so what I'll generally do when working on anything like that is just start to kind of you know mess with different uh, shapes and designs so I might draw a bunch of legs from a profile view or something like that and just kind of you know quickly sketch them out throw them to the side and and just really get the gears turning mentally for you know how to draw different uh, creatures and concepts um, so let me try a few different leg concepts I guess uh, one that's real easy to kind of think about uh, or do is uh, kind of like how uh, insect legs work where they're kind of more segmented so the neat thing about segments I think anyways is that you can pretty much turn them any way you want so and they look very alien uh, I think insects in general are good reference for aliens because we're not so used to seeing them up close so when you do see them really kind of up close and in full uh, in their full glory so to speak that they look really almost alien or just uh, you know just really neat to look at anyways so segmentation is kind of a neat way to make something look creepy crawly or whatever uh, you can kind of combine that segmentation with tentacle type looks and and textures and all kinds of weird stuff and you know really get it to look uh, pretty neat so you know I think uh, making these transitional kind of segments can be kind of fun to make an alien looking leg or appendage of some sort so I'm just going to draw a few of these again just to kind of conceptualize some things and you know I never know if this stuff will make it into the next stage of my drawing or the end result or anything like that uh, but it's it's a good way to get started anyways so so I might start with some legs like that um, or what I appear to be legs and then you know another thing is too a lot of uh, a lot of people like uh, humanoid looking renditions of aliens right and a really kind of easy way to do that is start with the humanoid form and just change the proportions a bit so I'll elongate the lower calf area like this give it like this wiry skinny little ankle that looks like it would just break under any real stress you know um, and let me get this up a little higher because I always run out of space here command T to resize move this up enter and command D to deselect okay and then you know so right here where generally maybe there'd be a foot and then it would look just pretty humanoid at that stage uh, I'll try something different and I'll just go ahead and you know maybe have the foot come outward like this you know something that's very different from you know something you'd see in a, in a humanoid or a human character homo sapien whatever you want to call them and then I don't know maybe like just an extra little bump at the end like that and then a little hook back here or something so so just little things like this can you know make something look kind of a lot more alien you know it's got these humanoid features maybe even a kneecap maybe even some of the similar type muscles but then all of a sudden down here it's obviously not human at all you know so there's just ways to do that which are pretty quick and you know fun to do let's try that And I'll just, you know, like I said, I'll just kind of catalog uh, ideas like this and try it out. Now, let me do some some head pieces and things like that. Because obviously, you know, legs are probably a little bit more boring uh, in a sense. But it's still just, like I said, it's good to do. It's good to like. And then you could take it off to the side here and keep adding and trying to change it up. And, and really, you know, push the envelope of it looking more creepy or whatever. Okay, so... As far as the heads go, you know, anything goes when it's when it's aliens. Like one of the things that I like most about 
drawing aliens is that you just can't get them wrong. You know, you just ultimately can do whatever you want, whatever comes to your imagination. And it's fine because, you know, no one's ever seen an alien, not yet anyways, um, that I'm aware of. Or, you know, you hear all the stories, obviously. Um, but then, you know, no one can really tell you it's wrong. I mean, they might be able to critique you on other parts of your work, like, you know, well, you didn't get one side of your alien face similar to the other, or, you know, the the, uh, the overall shading is weak, or whatever, your light source is all over the place. You know, they might be able to kind of uh, hate on you in some different areas, but they can't really knock you for your, your design of your creature, because it's just, it's whatever you come up with. So that's kind of that fun freedom thing about doing aliens and uh, fantasy art creatures and, you know, that type of stuff. You know, you can just really let the imagination go and, and have some fun with it. So whenever I'm doing these, I, you know, I try to fight myself from doing the same thing over and over again, uh, which I kind of feel in the process where I start to draw something and, you know, I just kind of sometimes do what I've done before. So I have to fight that and really try to see that in my work and go, okay, um, you know, can I do something different here for where a nose would be or uh, what would be another cool way to do the mouth? You know, would, would I want the mouth to straight across or um, does it even need a mouth? You know, so you start really just trying to think differently about what you traditionally might have done. Um, and then, you know, again, with the animals, you can start pulling reference from animals. So if you're really kind of stuck and you just like, you know, you hit a roadblock and you're like, ah, I don't know what I would do here. Uh, that's when you just really start looking at a bunch of animal reference. Um, aquatic creatures are a good one. Um, what else? You know, back to the insects. Um, yeah, I mean, just any number of things. And then, and then adding slight amounts to, of distortion and just different characteristics to each one. So let me try to think of something I could do differently here. So I'm trying to give them this like bumped lower lip, um, which almost reminds me of um, I don't know if you, if you guys follow Marvel comics that are that are watching this. Then the, I think they're called scrolls, or I think even Thanos. He's got this kind of thing going on. So we'll try a little bit of that. And it almost reminds me again of something you know aquatic in nature. Um, and then I always want to add multiple eyes to anything I do that's alien. You know, I've got a hard time just putting two eyes in there. Um, I think I would be more prone to even just doing one eye, if anything. So I might throw an extra eye up here. Or maybe something that just resembles, you know, a couple extra eyes. And if you notice, I'm only doing one side of the face. Just because it's a straight-on shot, I'm, I'm just going to copy it and move it over. And then I would do the final details and then light sources. Just because... You know, it's a straight on shot and it's more conceptual at this point. So I just, I tend to do that. I tend to take those shortcuts. So then I start thinking about, okay, how's the gloss of the eye? Is there a pupil? Um, I think to make something look scarier and more alien-like, probably no pupil. You know, more of just the glare across the eyes. So something like this. And I would do the same thing up here. But again, that's just me. Just what I think would look cool. And you know, maybe like some bumps on the face, you know, some alien acne. Because you know, just because they figured out a way to transcend uh, time and space doesn't mean that they've figured out how to clear up acne or bad skin. Maybe they're just above all that. Maybe they don't even think about bad skin anymore. Because they've evolved into something higher. I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, so there's there's the inner part of the face. And then, you know, as far as the face shape, let's oh, let me actually select this and put it on a new layer. Command X, Command V, Command T to move it down. And I guess what I'll do is I'll go ahead and flip the other side right now. So edit, transform, flip horizontal. Move that sucker over. And you know what's funny too is even in this stage, it's amazing how you can get quite a unique look by the distance as well. You know, we're so used to uh, a lot of things in, well, visually with humans, 
the eyes are generally one eye length apart but obviously for some kind of creature base there's no rules there so you can really kind of play with that I think I'm almost leaning towards closer together but let me see here now you know what I'm gonna go about this distance across and then I'm actually gonna draw in on the one side not merge them down yet and just see if I can come up with something uh, neat for kind of the center of the face so let's try that So really playing around with the the layout like this is, is just an easy way to kind of come up with different creature concepts because, again, you know, there's no rules here, so you just have to really conceptualize the entire time. You know, what would be, you know, would this thing have kind of a, a bone-like structure right down the middle of the face? Would that be cool or not? You know, what would the, the shape of the face be like? Does this thing have ears? You know, is there some kind of ear looking shapes coming off the side um, or is it just you know smooth and then it has a weird shape off to the bottom jaw you know it's just it's all about playing around and just really trying new things um, and seeing what's you know what you come up with so I think what I'll do is try I'm trying to figure out something for the chin here so maybe so like these weird little indents and this ribbing effect uh, that's another thing I think always looks kind of neat in these creature designs is these weird kind of ribs and the the uh, patterns you know so you almost start to think about like more of you know what their skin might consist of or um, you know what their bone structure do they even have uh, bone structure you know so you can really start to imagine what's under the uh, the skin more than just you know just drawing it so I think that if you tend to to kind of uh, conceptualize in that way your your drawings will in turn have a little bit more um, effect to them because you're actually thinking deeper into the process than you know I'll just put a shape here a shape there but you're almost thinking like you know how skin how uh, thin is the skin across the head can you see like veins up here can you see maybe into the creatures uh, brain cavity and see see their brain or something you know wild you know um, and that's all part of just really thinking about that as you're as you're trying to sketch in and I really don't know you know and back to fighting an urge I'm fighting the urge to just want to do this thing right and it just looks boring and plain and typical you know so I'm trying to think like okay maybe his, his ad would come up a little bit more to a point some kind and maybe another strong ridge right here and then I just I want to do something back here differently I don't know what if I just want to bring it out this way I just don't want them to look like uh, overly humanoid you know so I'm trying to trying to think of ideas here as I manipulate this weird looking sketch yeah so then up here you know I'd probably start those ridges larger like this and then have them taper in and another thing is just don't be afraid to throw in guidelines and you know obviously you've got layers over here to help you with that but just throw in kind of a tapered guideline like this and then you know add these ridges if that's where you want them to go and uh, you know make your make your life easier on yourself you know so I think a lot of people they don't think about the sketch as much like the the ability of the sketch is really to just throw lots of ideas in there and not it doesn't have to end up in the end result so sketch and sketch often you know and really conceptualize and soft erase um, one of the neatest things about um, about drawing is the, the ability to sketch this stuff in and kind of like let ideas just pop out from the the rough lines and just keep soft erasing and redrawing and vary up the intensity which you're which you're putting in your your detail and sometimes you'll get some of your best ideas like that you'll just kind of uh, always tell people it's kind of like a Warshak test or something where you look at it and you know this ink blot and you see something different than somebody else does your sketches kind of work the same way sometimes so if you're really just you know just kind of zoning out kind of almost in some ways you know so you're being overly thoughtful in some areas of your design 
but then in other areas you're just letting it kind of take shape so you know adding to it and taking away so I usually take this the soft erase here right here and I try to think about it like a kneaded eraser and I just get in there and just lightly push some of these lines back and I literally think about it like that like I'm pushing this stuff backwards on the page and then I'm coming back with more you know clarity and decision making and refining uh, some of these shapes and some of the the work that I put in there so I can get in there saying I like these little bumps here I like this little indent here you know I like the little the veins right there and I'll keep those I'm just making decisions as I progress through the sketch phase of this artwork And again, the uh, the bad alien acne. Got to get that in there. Texture is always a good thing. I don't think aliens would have perfect skin, but you never know. And then about this stage of where I'm at, I would start to try to shade a bit more. So I could either add a layer of some gray tones or something or, or maybe I take it straight to color it just depends um, but I generally would refine the line work a bit more but one of the things I've been doing more and more as I uh, create digitally and draw digitally is I'll throw in some some bits of shadow so actually I'm gonna cheat here real quick just to expedite what I'm doing I just need the information that's all outside of what's already over here command C command V edit transform flip horizontal Hit yes and move this over just kind of slap that puppy back on the side over here so you see I'm not against cheating I don't think it's cheating it's my own artwork I can do whatever I want command E merge it down okay so there's there's that guy and I just, you know, just keep going from there. Like, like I'm liking the shape of the head. And then what I would do so he doesn't appear to come out and have shoulders, I would add some different ridges over here. And I would just keep going and going with the, the design of this creature, um, you know, until I get it done. And then, you know, past that, like I said, I would probably start adding in some gray scales. Let me, let me try that. Add a new layer, right? Yeah. I don't think I like my layers way down here. Hold on. Let's bring this all up. Down there. Okay. So yeah, so now I'll start to add in a little bit of uh, tone here. I can try a little bit of an off gray. Yeah, just a quick update, just so people know, I'm actually working on my paint set for Manga Studio. Manga Studio, Clip Studio Paint. And uh, that will be available pretty soon. So I've been plugging away and creating uh, new brushes. It's not going to be an identical copy to my Photoshop set because the brushes do just work a little bit differently, um, especially in the paint department of uh, the two sets. So what I'm doing is actually changing some of the set to um, reflect more what the Mongo Studio brushes are capable of. So just be aware of that, that pretty soon I'll have a, uh, another set up on my Gumroad. And be sure to follow me on Gumroad for updates on my brushes and other video tutorials. Okay, so there's a little bit of base shadow to play with. And the reason why I like doing this more and more with, uh, with designing creatures or just anything really, is that it helps me visualize more in a three-dimensional space. Even if it's just some basic shadows, it doesn't have to be overly refined. In fact, I kind of stay away from overly refining it. But I'll do this even before I finish my line work now. Which, in a traditional sketch, I wouldn't have. But it seems like with digital methods, it's almost just, just makes sense. It's so easy to work with the layers and, and move back and forth that I feel like it helps me to find better line work. So... That's just me. Again, if you if you notice, like whenever I talk about this stuff, I say, you know, try it, see if it works for you. We're all very different in the way that we create. 
we're all very different creatures in general so you know I'm not saying what works for me will work for you unfortunately but it's always worth a shot so yeah so I'll start to get some of these shadows in and try to think of the light source a little bit um, hit X on the keyboard hold alt select the background get a little bit of a little bit of the highlight source in there and try to figure out you know where that lights hitting on the character and then you know if I want them to look more specular I do these little pin lights here and there which I think always looks cool with um, alien skin anyways almost like they're a bit shiny All something like that and then I'll just hit X on the keyboard and keep going back and forth and try to refine it So yeah, so just so everybody knows, this was a um, video request, and I'm um, trying to answer these back as quickly as I can at times. Uh, it does get a little bit tricky with everything I'm trying to juggle, um, just for for knowledge, so you guys know that I haven't forgot about you in case you've made certain requests. Uh, one that's coming up is I'll be doing a video, uh, whether it be a, a live stream or a video topic, it'll be for um, how to draw children. Uh, heads smaller faces and children's heads and things like that so more proportions and features and things like that and then another one that I've got to hurry up and get on the agenda and I think a few people have been waiting for is uh, we're gonna do a series how to draw how to draw and create a super villain so that'll be coming up real soon and that one's actually behind schedule so forgive me there but just just remember that a lot of the stuff I do is kind of pro bono so I have to fit it in between my commercial work so that I can you know keep doing art and keep paying the bills and all that fun stuff so as, as much as I would love to just answer every video topic and get them all done I, I end up having to you know I have scheduling conflicts essentially so they don't always come out as quick as I was as I would hope yeah so this brush is really nice too just a watercolor but you can see I can blend as I paint it in there um, but again, I don't want this to be too much on painting. This is more on the drawing process, but I just kind of get addicted to trying to <laughs> refine this work as I go. I don't want people to think I can't draw. So I try to get as much information in as I can in here. You can really with the veins you can actually draw the dark in or the light first. It doesn't really doesn't matter, but you can draw these in and then come back with the highlight. And then just hit some of the top areas a little bit. It's kind of a easy way to get veins in there. Okay, so I'll just leave it at that and I'll try to get something else idea wise because I don't want to just do kind of one idea and a couple legs off to the side because um, I think more the question of this particular uh, video or the, the thing I'm trying to answer back is how you uh, how you would create uh, creatures like this and I've answered that a little bit with the idea that you know you're gonna pull from different uh, concepts from nature you know it, you know, and one thing I want to make mention of, I don't think that it just has to be, you know, I mentioned uh, aquatic life and I mentioned insects, right? And those I would say are probably the, definitely the two strongest uh, besides mixing them up together with even, you know, mammals and, and reptiles and stuff like that. But, I mean, like this guy almost looks like a mix between, you know, an aquatic animal and a, and a reptile or something. Um, but also even plant life. So you know just really think outside of the box and then you know you can obviously incorporate things like technical robotics and things like you know not robotics but you know whatever you want to call it like alien technology you know so you just have to really just just let your imagination be your guide with stuff like that so let's take these two command t scale that down a little bit move it over And let's try one more quick concept before I call it good. Because these videos usually don't do too well if they're too awfully long anyways. 
Okay, so back to the drawing stage, and now what I'll try to do is just, you know, do something that's a little bit different than this, because it's like I said, it's real easy to kind of go into the tracks that you've already put down, you know. So, and sometimes it's nice to put something down like this and then change it up. So, so what I'll do now is try to do a different uh, starting point, where I essentially do almost the head shape first, and really, you know, try to do something a little bit different. Than what I've got here. So I'll do something that's a bit skinnier uh, as far as a head shape. And make sure I did this on another layer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, same thing, like, you know, the eyes. He's got kind of the rounded up tilt eyes. So maybe I'll do something where, I don't know, maybe it's just really thin, uh, maybe even like droopy eyes. We'll try something like this. So these kind of really sad <laughs> alien eyes. Something. All right. All right. He just hasn't gotten any sleep. Maybe he's an maybe he's an alien artist. That's why he looks so tired. He hasn't got any sleep for weeks with all his deadlines. All right. And then, you know, obviously the 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 thing that I most uh, tend to want to do is like, oh, I'll just draw a nose on him, and I want to give him a human nose, <laughs> and that obviously wouldn't make any sense for an alien. So. Um, so I have to like rethink that and then my next thought process is like the skull nose thing. I'm like, nah, I've done that way too many times. Um, and then there's like, okay, no nose, that would be easy enough. That would save time. And then I'll just try to reshape something else and maybe put the nostrils down this way or something. Which, you know, really doesn't even have to have nostrils, but I'm just trying to think of I like to make it look like it's somewhat understandable, but it's better if you can do it in a way where it's more fantastic and not so plain Jane, you know, so it's real easy to just say, oh, this makes sense and everybody will know what I'm drawing here. Um, so kind of that safe zone thing. So you got to try to get out of that safe zone once in a while. So the brow up here and yeah, it's looking a lot too humanoid and Kind of silly. I don't know what I'm doing here. We'll figure it out though. Alright, so let's figure out a mouth concept. Let's bring this up a little higher. But, you know, I almost want this to be a bad drawing at first anyways because I want to show you that you know, sometimes you just got to let let those bad sketches come out and then just make changes which I do quite a bit you know I'm, I'm not afraid to do a bad drawing um, and I think I've mentioned that in some of my videos like some of my bad work has turned into some of my best pieces but I had to just keep making changes so it's all about those small incremental changes um, that sometimes work out for the best so I'm like trying these little uh, uh, I don't know what to call them. S snorks? Do you remember the cartoon Snorks? <laughs> Probably nobody remembers that. Probably definitely showing my age there. They were like the aquatic version of the Smurfs, put it that way. I'm trying something different. Maybe something that's like right over top of the nose itself, like a, a bridge or a bone structure or something. I was just throwing in some crazy shapes as well, trying to, and you know, the other thing that I always get to a, a part like this, and I want to fight the urge to like, again, just give them shoulders, right? So that's like the boring thing and the most traditional thing and, and easy to fall into um, the pattern of. Uh, but then, you know, it kind of gets hard because there's like not a whole lot of options besides giving them those abrupt shoulders. So I'll just go with the little Kind of skinny neck and again when i start running out of ideas like this that's where i go back to nature and pull some pictures and you know start googling or whatever um but i'll just give them a, a little bit skinnier neck maybe a maybe an opening in the neck where you can see like some fluid or something crazy you know just just to kind of change it up and again try to think outside of the box so i don't go with something that's so mundane and typical 
Um, and then let me see if uh, I'll probably start soft erasing some of this back. I still don't like the the pointed head. That's a bit ridiculous. But let's see if I can refine this a little bit more. So just soft erasing so I can, again, push some of that data back a bit and then kind of come back at it again and hopefully think of some better ideas as I start to re-pencil back in. And it doesn't always happen. Sometimes I have to do this two or three times to, to come up with something decent. Um, and some days I get nothing. <laughs> or, you know, some nights when I'm uh, tired and I, I'm still trying to draw or whatever. Um, but that's okay too, you know. It's you got to just remember that uh, it's all it's all food for thought, you know. It's all stuff that you're you're logging in these hours, and uh, things start to click over time, and then you you start to get better and better ideas um, through the, the perseverance of it all. So I kind of want to do this thing where from the tip of the nose, it kind of meets down into the lower part or the upper part of the lip. I'm kind of seeing that as being maybe a cool design choice. I'm trying to do something different with the nostrils other than just the typical opening for a nostril. And I don't want to do the the hoods or wings of the nostrils. I don't know what you call them, but I don't want them to look so typical. So I'm trying to avoid that. But I don't know how, how well I'm avoiding that, but that's what I'm trying anyways. So we'll do this little opening for the mouth. Like this. kind of droopy eyes and yeah, I don't want to give them a pupil it's funny because pupils always immediately make them look uh, too humanoid or too maybe less threatening or something which I don't I don't think this creature looks very threatening anyways but he almost looks too tired to be threatening And I kind of like this downward turn bit of brow or something. I really don't know what this is, but I'll kind of go with this for now. So something like that. And then maybe a, a larger uh, segment here. So I'll put a bigger shadow. And I also like this bit of like segmentation right there. So I'll keep that. And these are all just small little choices, obviously, that will go into the, you know, consideration of it, the end result. I, I don't like the point, though. I'm going to change this a bit up here. <laughs> and these little snorkel-looking deals actually are starting to, starting to resemble a bit of uh, turkey legs, unfortunately. But, uh, but hopefully with the openings here, it'll, it won't, they won't look like turkey legs. Oh, boy, what am I drawing here? But again, you got to get some bad designs to get to the good ones. So we'll just we'll just roll with the punches here. And erase some of this back. And then as far as the what I would consider these being cheekbones, I guess I'm going to go with the same kind of effect that I've got going here with the brows. So I'm just going to do these slight uh, overlaps of you know segmentation or whatever this is, and I'll carry that down to here. A little reverse um, bends in there might look kind of cool, and I'm gonna go with like kind of this wrinkled uh, upper lip. I think that looks kind of neat. And a little bit more shadow into the eye line area here, and a pretty heavy shadow from the the big. Uh, brow thing that this uh, creature has going on. And that's, you know, that's really the process. So essentially, you know, again, I just do this over and over again till I get stuff that I like. Um, try a variety of, of methods. Um, the other thing is to try large shapes and small shapes and, and a variety of texture as well uh, don't get in the habit of doing everything so 
you know consistent um, so that your you know your drawings will tend to look flat if you do that so you got to really mix up you know your line weight your shadows and the way that you know you want to picture the way that things are textured kind of like what I was saying about the brain and you know headpiece of this guy um, you want to think about you know is this area up here smooth on the on this creature or is it uh, a rough skin or is it a is it a metalized headpiece or whatever you know so the more you start to think about that stuff the more it'll work its way into your sketches and you'd be amazed at how much information you can get into your rough sketches and the more and more you do that uh, the better your end result will be because you're giving yourself a lot of ideas and cliff notes into the later stages of your uh, creation process so it's it's a good idea to really try to take a, a really rough sketch and see how much information you can get in there so a little little veins a little texture of skin uh, you know little bumps for the skin whatever uh, not just cross hatching either the you know the shading's cool and everything but that doesn't always uh, work on every part every piece of what you're doing so try to do as much of it as you can with uh, you know texture lines stippling um, you know not always just cross hatching the heck out of everything you know because it's it's easy to do because it's like I think it's like addicting to, to overly cross hatch your work And I'll go ahead and cheat a little bit, even though I haven't really done much of that with this character. So I'll just kind of look at the other side and see how much of this information is already over there. Command C, Command V, Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Yes. It's funny too, because like if you do part of it and then you move it over, it shows you how bad your symmetry is. And I'm apparently pretty off with my symmetry, so I'm probably going to have to fix that as I go, but I'll just go ahead and put that in place for now. Oh, yeah, okay, make sure that's in place like that. And I still like that opening of the, the neck. Like I said, that's one of the things that made me feel like it was a little more alien. So I'll go ahead and erase that back. Yeah, I just think it'd be kind of neat to have like some liquid or fluids <laughs> in the neck area. That might be kind of neat, which uh, would obviously be a pretty weak point on the character. So I just karate chop him in his fluidy neck area. Yeah, so that's essentially how I would do some some different aliens. And you know, you just keep going on and on. Like maybe he's got some downturned little ears like this or something. So once you got enough of this information in place, it becomes, I think, easier to just kind of add things. Uh, it's also why I always say, like, draw a bunch of these and then set them, you know, save them, categorize them to where you can find them. And then look back at your work and then go, how can I take that sketch and improve upon it? Uh, don't just forget about it and don't, you know, don't just never look at it again or something. You know, make sure you go back and revisit some of your old uh, pieces of art like that and uh, you might you, sometimes you you look back and you actually go wow I had a really good idea right there uh, and other times you just uh, realize you know some flaws in your work that you could immediately approve upon now that you're so much wiser for the duration of your art journey so yeah so hopefully this video has been beneficial to you and giving you a couple ideas um, Again, sorry that some of these video responses take me a little while. I got a, I got a few things and a few irons in the fire, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I'll try to address more as I, as I progress. And I thank you very much for tuning in and watching today. Uh, and as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.